move on to the next talk. Uh, to give this talk, I invite uh, Professor V. Sheshaya onto the dais. He's going to talk about prevention of diabetes pandemic, open scope. I don't think anybody asked uh, which, uh, sir, onto the dais. Dr. Sheshaya is a uh, distinguished professor at the Tamil Nadu MGR Medical University, established the first diabetology department in the country in Madras Medical College in 1978, found a pattern of diabetes in pregnancy study group, vice chair executive board, International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Group. He's the recipient of the BC Roy Award in 1988, Lifetime Ad Achievement Award confirmed by IDF in 2017, and, and he's a Padma Shri awardee uh, for this year. A round of applause to Dr. Sheshaya. Uh, and uh, I don't think we have anybody as senior as him to tell us. I was just talking to him in the morning. I can't read your brain, sir, but I want to listen to it. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to address this august audience. Uh, I am thanks to the diabetes, this India's organized committee, scientific committee, for giving this opportunity. You, I am going to talk to a very, very simple message, very, very simple message. And I was listening to Dr. Kamalakar Sarpati. He was telling about basic teachers who taught us to come up in life. So this is the place I must tell. I was brought up by my professor Moses. So all things goes to him in my life. So my friends, I have given a very difficult topic. How can you prevent pandemic of diabetes? What is the hope? What is the scope? <laughs> that it is not difficult at all. Only one, I always like in my, in my career, message to be simple. I diabetes diagnosed DDM as the only single test procedure. So now I'm going to give you a very simple message. How can you prevent pandemic? You have been listening for so many hours here, breaking our head, what to do, how to do, how drug can come. Prashant, no more diabetes in the world. To follow. Very simple method. Now, as we correctly said about the estimation and projections of number of people 20 to 79 years with diabetes in different editions here, in 2019 it was 400 million, 63, now 221 went up, 537, and again it went up, going to go up 783. So we are facing this problem. There is nobody, none of us thinking how to prevent it. All of us finding a drug to treat complications. There is nobody thinking out how to prevent diabetes. That is it possible. I think, I wish God gives more years. Prashant, I lived a century, century, so I will prevent diabetes. All of you pray for me to prevent diabetes, let Dr. Sasha live. This is what I want to say. It's a very simple message. So again, pre-diabetes we take approximately 380 million, which is likely to increase to 480 million. So everything frightening, frightening, frightening. Uh, okay. Now again, one more flow frightened us from the AD, IDF. Diabetes is an epidemic of unprecedented magnitude. And but now, what is it? Pandemic. That's why I use the word pandemic of diabetes. Now. Before I go into real solution, let us see here. I would like to think, I am going to tell a different topic I want to speak. I am not going to speak detection of diabetes. That is all of us knowing it. Then, you know, number of studies are going on, beat diabetes, hit diabetes, all these things are going on. What I am going to speak here will be, does not mean prevention of diabetes. Detection of diabetes is entirely different. Prevention of diabetes is entirely different. You should not mix up in talking on this, this topic of diabetes and pregnancy. Diabetes. Now, what we need is primordial prevention of diabetes. This diabetes should not develop. What this fellow is telling, how can it be possible? I'll give you an answer. Now, this is what is happening, you know, primordial prevention. This goes on tertiary. Then all the drugs you use for the, from the morning, I'm listening to people, cardiometabolic diseases, heart disease. I wish 
I told you, I pray God to give me life too, so that I can suggest what you can do, not few more months I'm going to tell the, all these things. Now, primordial prevention is our own aim. That is what we should do. Please keep in mind primordial, primordial, primordial prevention diabetes. Now, question is, you can ask my, you can ask me, is it possible to achieve diabetes free generation? That is the question I'm going to answer now. I'm going to say yes. For that, whom to focus? Should we focus patients, uh, people with diabetes, or doctors, or whom to focus? Or men or women, whom to focus? Now, we'll go a little bit of uh, an epidemiology or whatever may be there, I mean, fundamental, fundamental medicine. Development origin of other health diseases. What are diseases that you've got phenotype? You develop, develop it develop from gene, from parents may develop, the gene is there. And what is important is what you miss is your intrauterine development and as well as post what now that's called epigenetics. So any disease for manifestation, you will have both genetic and as well as epigenetic. That is how you, this can manifest, this phenotype. So the simple message here will be here, genetic loads the gun and environment triggers stuff. Genetic may be there, but this this won't manifest unless epigenetic triggers stuff. So I, I I think I you all must remember this great chap in the in our country, 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, this he told Acharya Chanakya told philosopher told what a beautiful statement is made. I have learned from him what is thrilling. He said, when in life gets at least Siddhar Das here, yeah, he is the man who gave that uh, slide. Siddhartha's. When a life gets seeded, I got this point in my brain, it is not going out. It will be, I always tell this point. When, you, when your life gets seeded in a mother's womb, its age, deeds, wealth, education, and death all are determined right there. So he said everything is mother. Do we have a Father's Day? Mother's Day, no. Grandmother's Day, no. Anybody celebrating Father's Day? Is there? Which day? Recently, yeah, I'm talking to nobody thought about father. Yeah, all of us thought only mother. That's Anika told mother. All of us. <laughs> now, anyway, now after so many years, about 50 years ago only, this man told last century, the David Barker told the body's susceptibility to lifestyle diseases was for a grand intrauterine. So again, this point also, it's in, in, in our mind. So Chanakya told, now again, David Barker has told, he says that intrauterine programming, this is a very, very important message. Any disease, gestational programming is a process whereby simply maternal or stress that, uh, maternal fears or stress that occur at a, by critical or sensitive periods of that very important message at fetal development, Permanently change structure, physiology, and metabolic metabolism, which produce post individual to this not of life. They're finished. That means we said all things started intrauterine. So I am already leading the point where you are going to do now. He has already said. Now what what he said is fetal origin of other disease. So Chanakya, this side is um, uh, what David Barker. Where is Dr. Sashaya? <laughs> you will come now. <laughs> oh. Friends, this is a very important message. Diabetes mellitus, how it comes. In, in to say, all of us thinking my father diabetic, grandfather, okay, no problem at all. Innate destiny, no genetics. That is one, one reason. Another reason is here, intrauterine environment, which is more important. So this slide, that's a very good message you'll get now here. Diabetes environment. Exposure to diabetic environment in utero is associated with an increased occurrence of impaired glucose tolerance and a defective insulin circuit response in adult offspring independent of genetic predisposition type diabetes. That means if totally throw out of genetics. Don't tell genetics. Genetic, no. This study shows no genetics. Maybe there, but not so important. 
So what is important is here, I'll tell you further. Now to prove, convince this, ex, this audience, proved, animal experiment proved by somebody is proved, this beautiful slide, visitor rats, the low genetic risk of diabetes, no risk. When exposed to hyperglycemic media of the goto rat utero, so see the, what happened. Put that rat into the mother whose goto is, is hyperglycemic, significantly increases the risk of diabetes later life. So nothing is, no genetic here. Only thing is rat of the visitor rat put into the goto rat to develop diabetes. So that shows intrauterine exposure is more important than your genetics. Now, not only that this is proved in animal, what about the human being? Another excellent slide message here, maternal hyperglycemia and progeny. Here, the, the Pima Indians. This is a brutal study. Offspring of Pima Indians who were hetero. When their mother had diabetes, have a greater risk of diabetes than early siblings born before the mother developed diabetes. So, it is clear now where is the problem and what is the problem, how to solve the problem. Now, having discussed three points now, we will see that that means inside the milieu is more important than the inherited destiny. So, that means I am going to point to inherited, this one, inherited milieu. Now, having understood, you have to find out why it happens, where to catch this, when to screen the mother is going to transmit the disease to our progeny. Here is a very, this is a very crucial point I am going to discuss now. This I took a long time to understand how to go about this particular issue. Now if you go back into basic embryology, here is each islet cell, beta cell functions as an endocrine organ, each islet cell. Now what happens here, in human pancreas, begins to de develop fourth week after conception. See, you are already, fetus going to work, work in the uterus. And first insulin deposit can be found between week 7 and 8. Pancreatic illness differs, differentiate 10th and 10th, 11th week of gestation. So that means, it is, now I am going to detail more embryology when child growing, but 10th week itself, its pancreatic starts secreting insulin. The second is a response to maternal glycemia, 11th week is gestation. This is where problem starts. 10th week, it develops, but 11th week, it responds to the metal glucose. Ooh, fetus. Then where is the problem now? He'll go, he'll go inside the womb and see what could happen. So this again, a little bit of embryology, if you take a rational for screening for early weeks of pregnancy, that why I told you this point, um, all the systems, uh, central nervous system, heart, everything, develop within before the ninth week. All this is over. I am not worried about the congenital malformation. That is different aspect. I am going to uh, aspect of the of the metabolism. So after ninth week, what at the prandial glycemic level that can be considered as abnormal? What do you think it should be normal? So anything above normal is abnormal. You should not give the grade. Like uh, uh, ADSA is 140, the ISA is 160, no, nothing like that. You must go by physiology. Here that fellow says, pattern of glycemia, normal pregnancy, normal. Fasting is 71 point plus or 8, so that will be now roughly 80, and 2 over will be 120. Please remember this figure, because otherwise we all will, my talk further will get confused. Anything above normal is abnormal. So fasting is 80, normal pregnancy, I'm telling normal pregnancy, that means what? Anything above that normal level, you're going to get a problem. So renal threshold, again an important message here, renal threshold of the fetus is 110 milligrams. So these two points I want to argue further. So this is another message, blood test may identify just as level risk in first trimester, which none of us thought. We, now we are given a thought on this aspect now, blood test may identify just as diabetes, risk, not diabetes, risk in first trimester. That means we have, God has given us a chance, as I you act now, don't delay, do that. 
when glycemic level and the risk of gdm this is very very important message very very important a blood test conducted as early as 10th week of pregnancy may help identify women at risk of gdm so don't worry at all you just do the test at 10th week you know that lady is going to become gdm or not not at 24th week which all the books says here 10th week you must know i'll tell you why what is the reason again now here you see here had higher hbs level that time more than 5.3 percent or if india you cannot do everybody a1c at least blood sugar can be done this is a wonderful study anand anand 11 mg percentage compared to those without gcs diabetes that is 5.1 that means if, if it turns you do the blood test to find the mother's blood sugar is more than 110 that means she is going to become gdm not 140 they thought about that that you know come back come to this today's level 110 if possible you do a1c 5.3 and then because india everybody can't afford to do a1c now at least 110 so uh, my point is you must do as a tantric itself blood test to the mother there is nothing like doing glucose test gdm is telling give a certain amount of glucose fasting not for no it is not like that so only just do the blood sugar after food post prandial 110 that means she is in the problem a child is going to get into problem so again this slide will show you now here significance of fetal renal threshold if the renal threshold for glucose in the fetus is probably less than 110 that means as already that that level should not be there when the maternal glucose level is more than 110 milligram cause fetal glucosuria therefore uncontrolled maternal glycemic disease is associated with polyatremia from the fetal fetal because fetus go on gulping the mother's blood sugar it passes the urinary glucosuria again gulping the it's a, it's, a, it's a cycle so fortunately this is what happened fetus are exposed to increase fluid glucose before the 12th week itself suggesting that metabolic perturbations are, are underway before diagnosis and that earlier screening and intervention may be required warranted forget about what i've been telling so far today i'm going with a new picture new person talking to you the whole thing I'm, i i heard about that today i am sharing with the new message is that you must screen that the tantric itself and diagnosed made at the unattempted gram more than that she is going to become gdm so another important message here fetal placental maternal humor it is a is a natural so good one place everything happening is a placenta connect to the developing fetus via umbilical cord to the uterus wall to allow nutrient uptake thermoregulated for waste elimination and gas exchange via the mother's blood supply to fight against the internal infection and to produce hormone all these things occur within the uterus that, that's what called fetal placental maternal unit everything is managed within, within this this in the organ of the uterus so here you will see if it, the, what the placenta does maternal glucose can cross fetal fetal glucose yeah maternal glucose can give, give to fetal compartment they can transfer same way amino acid can from mother to the fetus similarly ketones can cross but take this also a little bit can cross a mother to the fetus but not insulin insulin whatever is in the mother that's why it cannot cross the placenta it is a in the maternal compartment not in the fetal compartment go now what what is what is the message of this slide now good cover not so one cross now i'm going to question what are uh, my dear friends here this is a big question i'm going to ask share with you maternal postnatal blood glucose comes low why it comes low due to mnt even it treat mnt maternal mnt therapy it will come down or any other mechanism here here the catch is here here if suppose imagine a mother's blood sugar is 140 mg around 12th week and you do to our two weeks postnatal blood sugar 
up to weeks or the system you always will feel happy my daughter oh my mother said the genium this lady has blood sugar has become normal now what has happened and we all thought why this situation occurs due to medical therapy or any other physical action so once you move away saying that this is the mnt you have finished that means that lady is going to become gdm why treat it is an important mechanism which i am going to share with you i don't think ever anywhere i spoke this topic so many years today only first time i am explaining this fetal handling of matter glucose that is the reason why this problem starts now what happens here poor glycemic control early in pregnancy will result in establishment of fetal hyperglycemia this is what happened the moment blood sugar just please remember this figure the moment blood sugar crosses 110 in the mother 10th week or 11th week will result in the establishment of fetal hyperglycemia just how how it can occur causing exaggerated fetal glucose steel that's called glucose steel how it occurs i'll show in this slide here contribution of to glucose gradient here from mother glucose m mother f is fetus from mother what will happen maternal hyperglycemia pushes the glucose to the fetal compartment it causes 110 that's enough it will produce the glucose to the fetal compartment 110 so that's what called then what i want goes to the fetal compartment that's what fetus what does it is it, is, it knows oh young my mother has become diabetic my mother's sugar has gone up what it does is and fetal hyperglycemia pulls the glucose it, it helps the mother see the child infant thus even before birth when now the kids are it's one support is his mother only it is a long thing so next step will be here because of the fetal glucose steel across the placenta to so that what could happen is as a consequence the old cactic glucose steel will increase the dispersal of maternal glucose into the fetus the attenuate the levels of maternal hyperglycemia your all your child infant child does so much a help to the mother not only mother helps the ingrowing child fetus but fetus also helps the mother in trying to maintain the non blood sugar that is the biggest physiology in the, in the fetal fetal met- metabolism now in consequently the overactive glucose steel will increase the dispersal of maternal glucose into the fetus thus attenuating the levels of maternal glucose so when you do blood sugar 140 or one week or one week it comes down norm doesn't mean that a patel has controlled diabetes it is only the fetus is controlled the mother diabetes so you will mistake it and allow it to go because already this uh, glucose start going to the mother child will become obese macrosomia so influence of fetal hyperglycemia on maternal glucose and exaggerated glucose steal by hyperglycemia fetus could also attenuate maternal glucose levels during an OGT that's what happens we do test very normal but actually it is not normal providing an explanation for why some mothers who with the fetus with the all the characteristic of the most affected fetuses have normal glucose levels you will surprise why macrosomia everything is doing very well but it already the damage has started when the lungs pick itself so thus there is a risk that dda will, will be not be diagnosed in a woman with the most affected fetuses that is my conclusion now we'll go to the next step we'll go so i told you that kamala kripathi was telling <laughs> i am quoting here maternal hyperinsulinemia and fetal hyper uh, hyperinsulinemia are the king means of maternal metabolism which my professor moses is tell about this so this is both very very important and i, I always remember this thing now i am going to the final stage i finished all my physiology then then okay what i would say what i what i am doing here whom to focus for the premodal prevention of diabetes now i am coming to the final point whom to focus what are the evidence to focus now friends this is very all the time you are quoting america 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 why america no no indians are there they are all scientists they are technology epidemiologists all oh, are all brilliant people but still we all talk about america and kamala tripathi work brutal studies produced with their own publications 
So we also must work on that. Now I'll show you here. Here is a very important. Please, this slide is very important. In September 2004, one Center for Diabetes Control, which all of you called CDC, issued a press release stating that with twin, twin epidemic of diabetes and obesity continued to threaten health America, health of Americans. Not in America, everybody was affected. And diabetes prevention program was introduced. Brilliant guys. They, they took the initiative. Then what happened? You, it's a, it's a Surprising here will be, in 2001, it was 6.1% when they started this, uh, this uh, program of the US population, a diagnosed diabetes, currently it is 10.5% of Americans do in about few years. 2001, 2011, this, this 2000, uh, yeah, 11 it was so, so high. No, no, not coming down. It's all an effort. You nutrition, you are running down, beach walking, nothing it is going up. So what is the answer? What is the answer that is now? I'm going to answer now. Because this all thing will not help. The Americans will totally fail of diet controlling and as well as. But they'll find new, new drugs. That's all they can do. But this they'll, they cannot do. So obviously, this is not a successful program, international not program at all. You can Primary prevention is possible. Please note this point very important. Primary prevention is possible. If you already diabetic, you can prevent further developing of uh, diabetes, further worsening. But what I am telling is, primordial prevention is not possible by exercise or all, the, all those things. That's what the previous study showed. Now, then what could be the successful program? Now, I'm going to give the final answer and stop my talk. This is only I must remember, remind you at all, life course experience of everybody here, pre-life exposure relates to the developing during the time present the first time of life, before the fetus forms. The OA time course from conception to conf confinement, and then from single cell zygote to finally found fetus at conf conf confinement, remarkable change occurs due to maternal fears, hormonal influences and the fetal development. The crucial period in the fetal development is the first trimester. So I'm going to give an answer now. Another answer I'm going to give here, importance of first trimester, why, why important? The first is very important because the first trimester begins on the first day of the last period and lasts until the end of week 12. And what is happening in this period is, this means that by the time one knows, for sure of her pregnancy, she might already be five or six weeks pregnancy. Lot happens during the first three months. So very important, the tenth week is that's a crucial time in the mother, mother's life. Tenth week of fetal development. So the pre-conception care, if possible, is very, very important. Now, oocyte metabolism, the influence of pre-pregnancy metabolic changes of fetal development may be mediated through the modification of oocyte metabolism predominantly of their mitochondria. And again, I was with Tripath was listening, mitochondria was very such an important, so it's a powerhouse, mitochondria. It's very important. Here, so changing early embryonic growth and lateral growth injection, reject, uh, projections. Now, this is the answer for all I'm talking about for so many minutes, I don't know how many minutes, developmental origin. Where it starts, and uh, Chanaka told, it's here also, the ovum is there only start. The ovum is well supplied with the mitochondria. But the sperm contains a few, and even those few do not persist in the offspring. So where is the question of Father's Day? Huh? What he does? Nothing he does. You ever seen that poor lady? <laughs> Mother, Father's Day is very important. Now Grandmother's Day has come now. Anyway. So... <laughs> So please, this is a very important message here. And then, at fertilization, at fertilization, there is only the nucleus of the spermatozoa that enters the ovum. And thus, all the cytoplasm, mitochondria, and the mitochondrial DNA are exclusively maternal inherited. So we are grateful to our mother. 
everything she only contributes not that fellow okay finally maternal inheritances of diseases maternal inheritances attributable to mutation gene present in mitochondria dna and is transmitted invariably by affected mother to her progeny so she protects her child also so finally the unique feature of mitochondrial dna in its maternal inheritance so friends here that means ends female gender is the key to diabetes prevention not the male gender female gender because here it starts a healthy pregnancy low birth weight or large for gestational birth weight the children are born and they may develop in the adult adult life elevated risk for obesity diabetes hypertension and cvd where it starts where you could have all all complications intergenerational transmission occurs so the link to the acid epidemic will be maternal health so now i got final message here glycemic level for diagnosis of different different categories of glucose tolerance during pregnancy i've been talking for so many years i am going to come with a new idea now i am sharing first time this idea with the diabetes in a meeting here my concept i may be wrong but somebody accept or not uh, my concept here categorization of glucose tolerance with pregnancy all of us know about that here first thing will be gdm this year we were talking about that at least now we have accepted 140 mg should be diagnostic category of gdm that is india at least except so many countries have accepted future risk of type diabetes and their problem at all come that is the first category next category also we which we call is gestation glucose intolerance they are not gdm the gestation glucose tolerance that means their blood sugar is between the 120 to 140 what could happen the adverse pregnancy outcome and occur these people this woman and future type diabetes also occur that's fine final message here this is very all of you taking this slide take this slide now this is very important i we are categorizing them as early gestational glucose tolerance early glucose tolerance that is eggi gdm gdi now i am going to tell another category eggi on the 10th 10th to 12th week that is a period Pure PG more 110 milligram, 110 milligram because these 110 milligram prone to develop GDM in the future, and the female, the male, that child will become a develop IGT or diabetes. So answer is only one one value, one 110 milligram is enough. So message here is pre-model prevention. What you should do? Ideally, peak. better first bundle blood glucose should be around 10 mg not 120 130 on but no all this forget about that today diabetes in 20 meet a meeting i am telling around 10 not those figures this is new 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 number i'm giving blood glucose be 100 mg for pre conception period but never never to cross 110 mg at any time that is see this is possible that's what trend is not impossible now one thing you must know what is the target level So 120 mg at any time is not class 120 mg. Ah, uh, at 120 and above all problem will start. All problem. 120 below no problem will start. So simple message is maternal sugar should not class any time of the day, any time of pregnancy. 120. Try to keep at 110. So start blood glucose level during pregnancy. Now what you should do will be maintain fasting 80 to 90 mg. If possible, I think I would prefer to keep 90, 80 because that is normal value. And then post prandial, with 110 milligram to 120 milligram, never to cross 120. Bean will be 90 and 105 milligram. So, but that the goal is obtain newborn birth weight appropriate for gestational age between 2.5 and 3.0 kg. That is should be your aim. This is a step to prevent offspring type diabetes. So, if you do that, child will never become diabetic. So, then, then, now I'm going to com complete my slide here. Now, because this slide is very, very important. I, I, unfortunately, there's no OBGYN here. All run away. I don't see any woman here. They are, the, they are the cause. I'm telling, talking about them and about to them only. Let's put it right from there. It's a big force because 
This is a very dangerous situation here. Maternal overweight tied to fertility issues in sons. All fertility clinics, each road, three fertility clinics will be there. In Chennai, I know, one road is the four. Why? They don't know that unless they're treating that boy who is not fertile, he'll never have a child. You do whatever you think, nothing will happen because this is what happened now. A published data from American Office of Gynecology suggests that women who are overweight or obese during pregnancy may be more likely to have infertile cells. Very dangerous statement I'm making. This is what published here. Dangerous. And the researchers say that maternal overweight, reason is, mother is so good, but here is bad. When she is overweight, it is bad. There may be tied to hormone imbalance that affect the development of male offspring reproductive system. Finished. That means mother or obese the child, which the son is going to be infertile. The study which includes 9,000 people they followed up. And women aged 31 to 34 years found that sons born to overweight mothers were 40% more likely to be infertile those born to mothers of non-weight. So all these gynecologists who put the birth fertility clinic, they must first advise them to do the test, find out whether mother had GDM and mother was obese, there will be no point in spending money, lakhs and lakhs for fertility. No conclusion. Prevention of non competitive disease, preventive measures against NCD should start during intrauterine period and continue throughout life from early childhood. Prevention of type diabetes must begin in utero and continue throughout the life course. So this this one slide is please take again one, one more slide, all of you take. Please take this. What is needed for premodal prevention? The essential to take timely action from preconception to confinement. That is our aim must be that. Preconception is must plan. Second point, important to screen all pregnant women for glucose, intolerance and first trimester, probably ninth to at least tenth week, must be able to screen and find what is happening. That's second point. Third point here will be the achieving eugenism. Never, never say no parallel. It's okay. It's okay. It's only 150. No. You must very, very particular in the value which, which the woman should be maintained. And then and ensuring adequate maternal nutrition and to maintain ideal body weight, no overweight. Obese mother, unfortunately, should be producing an infertile son. Steps to prevent not poverty, small for the stage stage and large for the gestation age who are prone to have diabetes. So we must tell the board in all the clinic, your child's is your child's health is in your hands. Check and control your blood, blood sugar. Check and control. That should be your message. Every clinic you must put like that. Every clinic. And then finally, so what a beautiful thing slide it is. The womb is more important than the home. That's what Chanik also told. And then it all starts in utero. So you cannot forget your mother. It all starts in utero. And he says, hence for pre diabetes for generations, Focus on the fetus for the future. Don't you think it is possible now? Such an impossible, possible work. <laughs> so, friends, one blood test prevents transgeneration and transmission of diabetes. One blood test at tenth week, and can probably you can. I hope so. It's my desire. Uh, I am going to share with you information. I'm, we are returned to the government of India, Ashok knows about that, that uh, overall probably interest in diabetes and pregnancy. We returned a national planning committee for promotional diabetes. Never, the government never bothered about that. So I'm suggesting the government, please start the committee of using all the people who are interested, national committee for programming for promotional diabetes. I hope the government, this is what I'm telling, not a one blood test, not many, many tests, one blood test prevents Regeneration of transmission diabetes. So we all join hands now. Let's all pledge to prevent diabetes. Thank you for your patience, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
as a mark of respect to sir can i request everyone to please rise and give a standing ovation <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much sir very thought provoking intra uterine programming loads the gun and we pull the trigger thank you so much sir. Hundred years, you know. <laughs> I can't fall.